guys, how's it going? So today we're working on planting four different varieties of daylilies out here in the South Garden. We've got a variety called Storm Shelter. These plants are enormous to start off with. They're gorgeous and beautiful purple color. We might even sneak some of these up into the West Side Garden. There's Sound of My Heart. Now, none of these you can see are in bloom right now. They usually don't start blooming until about midsummer on all of these varieties. I did notice, however, a few of them have some bloom spikes starting. But this one here, the gorgeous peach with the burgundy, oh, and they're real frilly. Then we've got one called King of the Ages. Now, this one is a taller variety and it's got huge flowers that are kind of peachy colored with the burgundy margin and burgundy throat. And this last variety, I just have three of these that I wintered over behind the greenhouse. So they do need to be groomed up a little bit before we get them in the ground. But, and I'm not sure if I'm saying this right, but Siloam Peony Display. Aren't those gorgeous? Oh my goodness. I have planted these before, but every single time I've planted them, they've needed to be moved. Like I planted them um, up in the front border before we removed the whole front border and they ended up at a friend's house. I think I had them in on our side garden as well. And those ended up at a friend's house too. So anyway, I don't have any of these established in the garden. So I'm excited to get some going. It's a fairly blustery day out today. In fact, I'm in two layers in June and it got cold enough last night to wilt our sweet potato vines, which is just nuts. Uh, we have two more nights at 40 degrees and then it's gonna heat up a bit, like during the day it'll get to 91, and then we're gonna have another cool off for this weekend and it's supposed to rain again. Um, so even with all this wind that we're getting as well, all the plants are so green and happy, it's just really, really nice. But I wanted to talk just a little bit about daylilies before we head out into the garden. I really like to put these in the garden because of their texture. I mean, their blooms are awesome. Um, I don't like all daylily blooms. There's a lot of different colors out there. I like typically like purples and softer colors, softer peach and soft yellows, but you can get like bright reds. There's a new one coming out, something chestnut that I thought would be interesting to try. It has a very autumnal kind of vibe to it, uh, but there's just so many different colors. But the texture of the leaves it's almost like an ornamental grass so you get both you get the color of the blooms and that ornamental grass look uh, which I think is a needed break in a lot of different areas you know we have a lot of leafy things um, so it's nice to have some strap leaf kind of texture mixed in as well and there's a reason why we see them so much in commercial landscapes they're just used very widely in that application because of how tough they are they're low maintenance you barely have to do anything with them I mean many of them there are some like going bananas um, um, there's another one that's similar to that, the Stella de Oro, um, that are just repeat bloomers. They'll just keep on blooming. Uh, Orange Smoothie does fairly well for us in terms of uh, rebloom. Uh, and you don't have to deadhead them. You can, you can go out and clean them up if you want, but they'll just still continue to produce blooms. Uh, but typically you can cut them back in the fall if you want to, or you can wait until spring where they'll just rake up. You won't even have to get down there and cut any leaves if you don't want to. They also tolerate different pH. So our high pH, they handle that really well. Lower pH, they can do that too. Now they do perform the best in full sun. So if you can give them six to eight hours plus of sun, they will do the best, uh, but they can also do part shades situations. They may not bloom quite as much, but you'll still get the beautiful look of the plant and some color. Now, all of these varieties, I'm not sure if I already said this, are a zone three through nine. So super, super winter hardy, uh, but they also go up to some more mild, warm climates as well. And they do attract pollinators too. I haven't noticed a tremendous amount of hummingbirds around our daylilies. This year, I've noticed more hummingbirds than any other year ever. I don't know what this weather is gonna do for them, but, uh, but I have noticed more, so we'll see what happens. But I've noticed a lot of butterflies around ours and honeybees as well. They are supposed to be resistant to rabbits. That's not something we deal with, so I can't speak to that exactly, but um, definitely worth a try if you have rabbit issues. I'll go over all the individual details of each one of these varieties once they're out in the garden and you can kind of see the setting and see what they're planted around and the plans for the areas they're going because I think a couple of these are going to be going in areas that don't have much in going on in them yet. Uh, but they are very quick to establish and I notice with my other day daylilies that I have that they don't cry out to be divided all the time. You know, there are some perennials that kind of hollow out in the center or they just get weaker. I don't notice that with daylilies and I don't like to divide plants. <laughs> it's not a garden chore that makes me happy to do. I mean, I will do it if something needs it, but I like things that I can just plant and they will just stay there and do really well. That's what we're shooting for. All right, so let's go get these planted. I've got my auger and starter fertilizer. This should be pretty quick, pretty quick job. <music> Thank you. 
got them all planted. I'm super happy with how they all look. I did use my gloves, which is abnormal for me. I know that some of you guys would probably comment about that, but out here in the South Garden, where we put all of those wood chips down in a really thick layer, it can be a little bit tough to work around those. Like even with my hands that are pretty rough, like my hands are used to working in, in soil, but those wood chips, they're pretty slivery and they can poke you pretty bad. So that's why I had gloves on. So the first one, this is the variety Storm Shelter. These are so incredibly beautiful and eye-catching. Now they grow about two by two, so two feet tall, two foot spread. That's why I put them fairly close together because I kind of want them to be, you know, grown together in this nice big irregular drift. I did leave enough space. In fact, it starts off smaller there and then it gets bigger right here so that I could come in with something a little bit shorter so that they looked a little bit more or look a little bit more tucked in in the end. But the flowers on these, you can see bloom stalks on a lot of these. Five inch diameter flowers that are kind of a mauve color with dark purple, like a plum eye and plum around the margins of the leaves. They're just stunning flowers and they're fragrant. And who doesn't want a fragrant flower? I'm really excited about that part. Now I ended up with two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven 10, 11 in this drift. It will be very eye-catching, I think. And these are the type that bloom midsummer, and then they bloom again late summer, early fall-ish. And I do think that they'll be especially pretty in this spot being right underneath the forest pansy red bud because I think that the colors, they're kind of matching in a way. You know, this is kind of a deep plum. This has deep plum in them. So I think it will be a very pleasing look right here. And that's the variety. I thought we might tuck one up in the West Side Garden, but I just thought they would look so good all together out here. Next group is right here. So these are Sound of My Heart. We have five of them here in the same area. We've got a one of the new Shade Master Honey Locust trees. We've also got three mock orange, which are blooming and looking beautiful. And I did mean for these to be kind of the edge plant and they will grow out you know they grow about two feet wide so they'll grow out a little bit more you know um, and maybe kind of go over the grass a tiny bit but I don't want them so close that we can't edge uh, so I think that this will be a really pretty group right here they grow about 28 inches tall too and the flowers are gorgeous so these are like a pastel pink um, and then they have a really deep like a burgundy kind of eye and uh edge and they're ruffly. I think they're so pretty and they also bloom midsummer and then again late summer early fall. And the other two varieties are over here. Okay so here we are kind of on the back side of everything but I don't want this area to become kind of like no man's land. You know we are doing a lot of big things right here to create a hedge so we'll have our walkway in there and hopefully in the end you won't even be able to see inside to the walkway but I want this whole border to be pretty. I don't want it to become kind of like a forgotten space. So I'm trying to be mindful about popping some things back here that are low maintenance, but very pretty. Now these will get full afternoon sun and that's why I think they're gonna do really well here. Uh, so King of Ages grows about like three feet or maybe even a little bit more tall. Two foot spread still on this one, but huge flowers. Like six and a half inch diameter flowers that are kind of like a mix of peach and butter yellow, and then they have burgundy accents on them. They are really pretty and kind of have that frilliness as well. And then this one is one that's supposed to bloom mid through late summer. This is the first time I'm growing it, so we'll just have to see. I don't know if that means like it'll bloom midsummer and then again late summer. Uh, we'll just kind of watch it this year and see what it does. And the Baptisia gets quite a lot taller. So in the end, we'll have a nice kind of layered, that'll be a little bit taller. This one will be shorter. We are gonna put a tree uh, right in here and probably some more larger shrubs back in this space here. And then that black lace will fill in this space a lot to where you won't really be able to see this stuff from that side. Okay, we're just gonna cruise straight across here because this is where the peony display daylilies ended up. Standing at the entrance here, you can see some Russian sage. These are firelight tidbits, uh, hydrangeas. And then we've got the new Zephyro blue spruce we just planted as well as the ginger wine nine barks, echinacea, then our peony display daylilies. Oh, they're so pretty. And I don't know if they are lighter in color because I wintered them over and maybe they're a little stressed. That could be it. I honestly hope they stay that color. <laughs> they look so beautiful contrasting the echinacea. But again, I don't know. They'll probably deepen up, I'm guessing. I like that texture right there. I only had three of them. So it's just gonna be a nice little pop right there. And I cannot wait to see the peachy color with the pink of the echinacea that we have right here. We also have, there's pink and then there's also this green twister. Isn't that awesome? This one also stays a little bit shorter than the other one. So 18 inches tall is where it tops out in a two foot spread. 
so it'll fill in this area beautifully and it blooms midsummer and again late summer early fall and the description of the flower says and you never really know about descriptions right so it says that when the sun hits the petals it makes them sparkle like there's diamond dust on them and they truly do i've seen this one in bloom and they are really like really gorgeous flowers and that is it you guys for daylily planting today i'm really happy to have these in just because you know out here you know in the beginning i said no perennials we're gonna do just trees evergreens and shrubs <laughs> we have so many perennials out here but everything we have put out here they're tough perennials they should be fairly easy perennials to take care of daylilies included daylilies probably are on the top of the list along with like russian sage and echinacea in here um, as at being low maintenance and easy to handle. And they'll really provide a lot of nice color so that it will be an added bonus and benefit out here in this space. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.